Hey, lovely listeners, we're here live bringing you another dark match, a fresh installment, and we will be reviewing the week of WWE. And I'm here, Magpie, strapped and ready to review a show, and with me are my cohorts. I'm the match tracker of Dark Match, Mega Fighter Free. I am the janitor of the Dark Match, Jim the Rabbit Cow, and I'm currently in the middle of trying to clean up Mega, uh, No Leaf's desk after someone did something to it. And I'm Again. your friend. And I'm your Fox friend Backlash, and God, there was wrestling this week. I kind of forgot. Uh, I seriously... We're, 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 I'm about to talk about Raw and SmackDown. I have results in front of me, and off the top of my head, I remember nothing. I can think of one thing from SmackDown, and it's not, what, it's not something you're going to like. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Anyways, Iron Cheek. Ha ha ha! The WWE 13, I beat the fuck out of anybody who fuck with me. Mm. Iron Sheik, sports lover and avid video game player. Wait, does that mean he'll be having open fight nights in WWE 12? Dude, Mega Fire, you gotta fight him in that. <laughs> Hunt down his gamer tag. We need Iron Sheik's gamer tag. Wait, that's a thing, though. Does he play Free 60 or PS3? Shut up. <laughs> I'm right now just picturing Iron Cheek playing Call of Duty right now. Could you imagine him talking to people via Call of Duty? Dude, it would be perfect. I think he's tailor-made for that game. He's like, fuck you! Trying to shoot me down while I'm trying to go with my team. I'm not even going to try to do an impersonation. I make the campers humble! He, I, I'm right. just picturing making so many people crying, being confused of what the hell they just got insulted at. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Is that about my mom? What was that? You heard me. I'm Iron Sheik, motherfucker. <laughs> okay, Someone now I figured out his gamer now tag. I'm why we don't let you do Sheik tweets? Ali figured out a uh, exactly Iron Sheik's gamer it. tag. X X Raisin Balls X X. Okay. Anyways, Raw. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about Raw, which actually doesn't start out with a promo. It starts right into the match, which is Big Show versus CM Punk. Hey, Again, I, I like this. Hey, look, the WWE champion's in the main event. Wait, that's not the main event. Uh, well, he will be later in, as the plot develops. But for right now with this match, it's basically your standard Big Show versus CM Punk match in that uh, plucky young fighter champion going up against behemoth that's not that interesting to watch in the ring anymore and Kevin you know, Nash put up a good fight other behemoth ah uh, the, the behemoth with a better work rate who eventually we started to hate not hate right away <laughs> at any rate though it's just uh it was just one of those matches where you just uh explain punks just doing his best and i really like how punks just uh his psychology in the match is like okay i can't really let this guy use his power move so i'm just gonna be as quick as possible and just get in my strikes and he's very smart about it he was just like trying to get in weave in and out and then when he would hit a big move like the knee to the face or just whenever he needed to do it had a big impact and an oomph like he planned it which is what i completely liked about the match and also liked the fact that Every time uh, Pig Show went for the spots where he would just slap the chest, he'd be like, shh. No one, completely everyone shit on it just because of his heel turn. Mm. Which I love. As soon as he just became face, I mean, as soon as he went from face to heel, everyone just shitted on him. Yep. And then yeah. he just gets into, and then we get into the part where unexpected interruption after Show just yells at the crowd, I'm, who's going to stop me? You, you. We get those. Uh, we get Daniel Bryan showing up out of nowhere, insisting that he should have been in the main event for SummerSlam and not Big Show. And I'm hard. It's hard. I'd be hard pressed to argue with him. I just find finally every time we see Daniel Bryan now, he's trying to get. He's trying to get out of his storyline and join everyone else's storyline. Well, I, I. That's actually a good point. I like in this um, uh, part of it, like we were saying, like he should be in the main event. I'm like. Oh, cool. He's trying to get out of his lame storyline and get into the championship picture again. Fucking awesome. Yeah, maybe we'll finally force him, uh, sorry, Big Show out of this freaking title picture because he doesn't need to be here. Or have the title. Well, they, there's well, no chance. Oh, great. Well, sadly, back neither back. does Cena, but that's kind of where they're going. But let's save that for the end of the show. Yeah. 
Right. So Daniel Bryan just uh, plays with the crowd. Uh, you know, yes chants and a bunch of no chants coming from Danielson. Uh, he goes to the announcer's desk, states his claim that he should be in there and watch what he's about to do, and suddenly interrupts the match and puts CM Punk in a legit label lock. Or no lock. And then Big Show deciding to capitalize and get on an already weekend and uh, <clears throat> champion in submission decides to just land right on him. When who comes to rescue him? Cena. Yay. Yeah. Well, you know, Cena storms in there, just uh, boots him out, and then uh, Danielson makes a back kick to the knee before booting him out, and AJ shows up. <sighs> yeah, I, s- I see what they're doing with Cena, and not necessary. I, well, I, I actually hate to say this now, but I love AJ. But oh no, nothing against AJ. Yeah, Fuck. nothing against AJ. Jeez. But there's like nothing they could do could make me give a damn about this. Like having AJ come out being this is a good idea. Like this was her idea. I want to be mad at her. But I to be fair, she's crazy. She's so so not every idea she's gonna have is gold. I know, but it's like you know, you you. It's like if if let's say John Laurinaitis made out came up with this idea, we'd be bitching at him. Not about the rest of us. We'd be bitching at them for the stupid idea. But it's a AJ, we all keep forgetting this was her idea, and she comes out. We're like, AJ's out! Yay! Yay! Wait, you did this to us. We should be mad at her. But she's too damn adorable. And to be fair, unlike John Laurinaitis, she can shining wizard us in the face. So yeah. So J- AJ decides to make the stipulation. Looks better in a skirt than he does. Well, let's uh, let's save that debate for another time. But for following right now, this, though, it, following this, we get a uh, pipe for the contract signing for Triple H and Brock Lesnar because this is the go home show, and that's all we're supposed to give a shit about. Mm. And then, after, then after the hype, we get we surprisingly see one half of crying time, crying about how he's not been featured on Raw, and he's been giving the same complaint where I've been having, where it's like there are one. Two, three hours. Three hours in the show. And am I on the show? No. And I'm like, there, there is three hours on the show. Why aren't there more matches? Because, but then he decides because to, of contract signings. Yeah, contract signings. And as he's complaining about that, AJ's just skipping along happily in the background. And I'm thinking, oh, she's not going to be involved in this segment. She's just being cute as adorable. Until JTG says the word crazy. Which AJ does not like. Oh, I so feel so bad for you, job into guys. You know what? I actually would love to be like a running gag now with AJ, where like have like someone just be like at a Burger King drive through like have I don't know, let's say Del Rio at the drive through getting some Burger King food and says, "Man, this is crazy!" And all of a sudden, the window opens up and AJ pops right out. You got a match against Big Show and just disappears. Yeah. She's, a, she's in the drive-thru window, just... Yeah, hand in the food. You got a match tonight. Bye. Uh, <laughs> or, or uh, let's say, another superstar is uh, just Daniel Bryan's at a sale. It's like, oh my god, this is the craziest sale ever. 40% off of everything. <laughs> AJ shows up in, like, one of the stands. Is like, what did you say? No, no, no. She would emerge from the, the clothing rack. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'd be pretty. That'd be pretty kick ass. But AJ, after hearing the word crazy, is like, you know what? I'm gonna put you in a match, and I'm gonna find you an opponent. Hmm. Wonder who that's gonna be. Hmm. The jobber is going to have a match. I wonder. Ah, uh, yes. It's probably gonna be Yoshi Tatsu. So then, uh, <clears throat> after that, we get we cut. Uh, we cut back, and JTT is in the ring. It's stoked, and surprisingly, Cole mentions that about his Twitter rant, which, if you're following Twitter, JTT was uh, talking about how he wasn't happy about this, which is weird because you're like, wow, some an employee bitched about the company publicly like that, and they decided to put him in a match afterwards. Go with social media? Uh, I guess. Yeah, well... JTT is in luck because his match is against Ryback, and this is where they're premiering um, the new sample to Ryback's theme. The Feed Me More chant is now in Ryback's theme. Mm. Mm. 
Ryback does a thing and wins. That's all. Yeah, we'll give JTD credit. He did some good sellings. And, I, the, and then during the match, he was like, Hey, hey, don't give me pink eye. I don't want that pink eye shit. Well, there's, there's two things I got to say about uh, the Ryback match. First off, when did JTG lose his pants? Because I, I know. noticed he, he he was wearing red ti- red tights and red you know red knee, knee pads and red boots like a normal wrestler. He wasn't wearing his normal ghetto pants. Uh, I guess it's just more comfortable to w- wrestle in the shorts. I think he may have dropped that after Crime Time Split. I'm not entirely yeah, he, sure. He's he. he He's done that a while. Like this is the first time I've noticed him mm. not having the um I don't prime time. No, I seem to remember him being on superstars or like when or when they brought him up previously to job to people. Yeah, he had he had the his no the other clothes on. And secondly, is it just, is it just me or does Ryback's theme sound something like Spoonie's Russell Russell intro? No, just you. <laughs> just you. It's just you. Anyways, um we get an announcement that Roddy Piper is here. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you think so, but no. Wait, he doesn't show up? Fuck. No, he does, but no. Oh, yeah. It's no. <laughs> wow, I can feel your enthusiasm. <laughs> I don't know. It's just no. I just and backlash is already just, broken. I'm not broken. I'm just fucking weird. All right, let's move. Have on. you and Digi been smoking or something? What does that even mean? I think he's trying to remember what he. Do. I think he's trying to remember as best he can. Manos, the hands of fate. Going back to a happier place, okay. surprisingly. A- anyways, um. And there's going to be an episode of Piper's Pit tonight, and they're doing another one of these Twitter votes where you can pick between Chris Jericho, The Miz, or Dolph Ziggler to be on Piper's Pit. The trick of this is, if you pick exactly what the WWE picked, you won. And what do you win? No. A brand new car? Dang. Oh. Sorry. I pick Santino. I pick Nathan Explosion there. It's not working. Nothing. That was much better. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try that. <laughs> anyway, wanted that brand new car. Here's... Anyway, so we go from one jobber to another as he slitters in the ring, talking about how he's just gonna change his luck and tonight's his night and he's the one man band and oh god, Archer shows up and kicks his ass. Yay! Man. Yay! Man. I'd have preferred it to be Kofi because I think Kofi and Slater would have a better match, not uh, discrediting our truth, but. Well, at least the Chag champion looks strong, and our truth got individual time to shine. And, and I'm really, it's this... all about just like letting the returning superstars, you know, get back in shape by beating up Heath Slater on TV. Yeah, yeah, but this is like the third week, and I, we still have not had a status update on what happened to Little Jimmy. Is he okay? Little Jimmy is fine and recuperated. In fact, he all actually right. had a birthday party recently. <laughs> do, yeah, good for him. Do we see that at all? I would love to see that clip. Well, there's actually pictures if you visit if you visit the if you visit the Spoonie Experiment, look at the funny pictures website. You'll find pictures from Little Jimmy's birthday party and the fun ad- adventures they had that day. Our Truth even took Little Jimmy on a roller coaster ride, and I bet you he got a kick out of that. Uh, All right. Anyways, following the match, the primetime players come down, and thank God they haven't forgot about them. Oh yeah, that's my one fear when they uh ca- when they fired Ah. I'm like, oh please. Keep a keep that tag team. They were good. Don't let them get dragged down with that dickhead. Mm. But luckily, they're still there. The match is still on the uh, for SummerSlam, and they went down and promptly beat the shit out of our truth. Mm. And if you're wondering where Kofi Kingston was this week, he was in China <laughs> or where the fuck the tour was. All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, up next they show. Out videos from Mark fucking Henry, who I thought did not work for the company anymore. No, he's nope, been out on injury, injury, if I recall. Or they finally no, I thought his contract expired. It might be that, like, even though he is probably not officially with the company, he still is on good terms with them and stuff. And, you know, he's probably busy. 
you know, it's either you're going to get Mark Henry to be touting from London for the Olympics or they give the Iron Sheik a chance to be, do that stuff. And chances are... Yeah, we don't. If you're gonna as much as we want to see the video of Iron Sheik meeting Team Israel, I think it would just be better for WWE's public image to not let him do that. Uh, <laughs> We've got I, two I, former I, wrestlers at, at the Olympics: Mark Henry, who everyone knows, or Iron Sheik, who could, let's just go with Mark Henry. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe he was just at an injury. Maybe he signed a new contract. I do not give enough of a fuck about Mark Henry to find out. He's probably uh, trying out for like World Strongest Man. I think that's what I heard. He's trying that out for that thing again. Mm. Anyways, following this, following this, we get fuck. Now I remember why I don't give a shit about this show. <sighs> Cole and Lawler are plugging DJ Pauly D, the new social media ambassador. People. Oh. I I, I love WWE's choice in social media ambassadors. Okay. We're a family-friendly company, and we like to have an entertainment, so who could we get? Hmm. Let's get Charlie Sheen and one of the people full of VD from the Jersey Shore. Yep. This is... Actually... I feel like this is WWE's answer to Bubba the Love Sponge. You know what I find hilarious about this? It's... Every time, and this is a Charlie, a Charlie Sheen reference, every time he does something, whoever takes his place afterwards is always fucked. <laughs> Look at Ashton Kutcher with uh, two and a half men, and now our new ambassador is Polly D. Yeah. Can't we just get Danny Bonaducci and just get and just? I'd rather take Danny Bonaducci over Polly D. At least Danny Bonaducci's fucking insane, and it'll do something memorable. Exactly. Could you imagine, like you know, Daniel Bryan making fun of uh, uh, Danny Bonaducci and just have Bonaducci just snap and take out Daniel Bryan? <laughs> Yeah, but after him, we'd have to get Gary Busey to keep up the train of crazy. <laughs> Just get all of the world world's dumbest people. Get Tanya Harding over here. That'd be more hilarious than Pauly D. Hmm. <sighs> anyway, any rate, talking to, going from wash up, let's get to a, actually a really good wrestling match. Sin Cara taking on Lord Tensai. And when they announced the match, I was like, Oh, I wonder who uh, Sin Cara's going to face. Uh, I, mean, probably my I forgot both of these men were still employed. Wait, what? Wow, your pessimism. I can feel it. That's how I am tonight. I don't care. I don't care about what WWE's doing right now. I've just lost interest. Uh -huh. I mean, last year around this time, WWE was doing fucking amazing shit with both Cena and Punk being champion at the same time. That was interesting. That was good. This... That was lame. Yeah, there's just... They're just uh, treading ground, treading water until they get to Royal Rumble. They just had no. Good when the idea. Rock comes back. They just had no good ideas this year. Well, they had a few, but mm -hmm. it it's more than just rehashes and. No, see, I think the issue is backlash. Is they had a ton of great ideas. Problem is, they're still trying to piggyback on those ideas, but it's already past their kind of prime. I mean, Daniel Bryan and AJ is. And CM Punk going here are the only two storylines that are good. The issue is they have to shoo in every other superstar they can into those things. Yeah, so instead of having every you know super set, every superstar set like a set number of superstars in their own individual thing and their plot lines and building them up and maybe having them have their own divisions with each set title, let's involve everybody into this storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Either I way, mean, though, let's move forward and just talk about this match, which is actually one of the better Sin Cara matches I've ever seen him in in the WWE. Hmm. I mean, I didn't honestly think this would in a million years work, like having Ten Science and Cara work together. But I was just like, oh, okay, this is not going to be that good. But it really was good. I mean, hmm. I liked it. I liked it up until, the, of course, the ending, which is Sakamoto getting the crap beat out of him. I mean, I'm getting sick of that gimmick. I don't even want to call it a freaking gimmick. And I'm getting pissed off that we have face superstars leave the poor man to get his ass kicked. I'm yeah. sorry, but like I remember like back in the day, back when Earl Hebner was kind of involved and like DX would beat the shit out of Earl Hebner. Austin would at least come out and beat up DX because he fucking hates DX. I remember shit like that going on when they would protect officials and managers because even though they kind of associate with them, it's kind of like 
they don't deserve to get their ass kicked. But this has gone on for what three, four months of I come out with ten sight, I get beat up. Someone should at least I don't know step in and save the poor man. Hmm. I don't know. We it's, need a real hero. Not, he would have not put up with this. I mean, I pray to God maybe they'll bring back Hurricane. He'll can fly in and save him or something. I don't know. Hmm. Sinkara wins the match with the DDT, which is surprising to me. But then when you think about it, I'm like, well, what other move could Sinkara put him in? Sure. Okay, so we go from the Sinkara match to hyping that HBK is here. And HBK, they cut to him being backstage, and he's just worried. Like, he's just like, what's going on? He's looking left. He's looking to his right. He hears music stalking behind him. He's paranoid. And then we cut to another plug for Piper's Pit, which we reveal the winner of set uh, pull. And thank God, it's May Young. Chris Jericho. <laughs> I'm going to do that for now. Every time there's a vote, I'm going to vote for May Young, no matter what. Hmm. That's not funny. CM Punk versus May Young. Okay. Would it, be, uh, would it be hilarious to see her take the GTS? <laughs> <laughs> She'd probably do it too. Oh yeah, May Young's fucking tough. <laughs> but uh, the Piper's pit, pit time. It happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Fuck it. Um, yeah, I. Remember nothing. Uh, basically, the only thing I remember is uh, Piper comes out and Jericho comes out and they're just basically saying, last time you got your ass kicked and last time you got your ass kicked when we were in this ring together. Ha 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 ha. Good thing you're back. Get interrupted by the other two guys who didn't show up on the damn show. Yep. That's well, basically that the... And then yeah. Ziggler... Ziggler decided to crash the party because why the fuck not? I love the exchange that Ziggler and Roddy Piper have where he's like, You're wearing pink! Pink's a summer pink's a summer color, man. What the hey? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Which reminds me, I have to buy that t shirt. <laughs> or if one of our fans would love to donate one. I thought I asked. <laughs> I ask. Yeah, I know. Yes, all of our one fan. <laughs> Yes. And we're proud of that guy. Yeah. There we are. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. Triple threat. Triple threat. Because, you know, Miz comes out. You know, it's kind of hard to have a triple threat when it's only Dolph and Jericho in the ring. Yeah. Well, they drag I love Piper when, in. Oh, I love it when Jericho slugged the Miz. He was just like, so what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Which I like that. I mean, I miss Teal's just at reacting that way. It's like, you said something offensive. I mean, Teal's face is reacting that way. You said something awful and offensive to me. I'm going to punch you. <laughs> oh, that's right. Hitting shuts people up. You know, I almost kind of wish that Jericho was feuding with Miz instead of Dolph, just so um, it, could be, the waste it could be for time? the title. Oh, I miss Intercontinental Champion Jericho. Yeah, also, I don't think he's ever held the white strap belt. Nope. Well, he's had it eight other times. <laughs> One time he had to share the belt with China. That was hilarious. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think it was hilarious, but at the same time, it's Jericho. Just give him the fucking title. But anyway, we get into this match, which was pretty good. Well, when yeah, exactly. Miz wasn't doing anything. <laughs> I just liked it for like a good set of time. Every time Ziggler, try, like at one point Ziggler gets thrown out the ring, and then for a night, night, it's three to five minutes. Every time he tried to get back in the ring, he'd get knocked right back off off, off the apron, back on the ground. <laughs> I loved it. They're just like, no, stop trying to ruin the match. You get outside. Me and Ziggler are gonna work. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, and I loved how when uh, Chris Jericho was working the match, he was doing... Anytime, uh, like, he's been doing this lately because he's been working with shorter guys, but I just love it when he hits on the Lion Tamer. It looks so fucking vicious. 
That it That's does. one of my favorite submission moves. I don't know. He he's been doing that a lot more recently. Oh yeah, he's ha- he's been having way more shorter opponents to work with. Like starting with Punk and working with uh, Danielson and Miz. Now he's been having way shorter people to work with because he said it in his book that the only reason he did the Boston Crab variation of the Walls of Jericho is because everyone was taller than him. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, basically, what happens is Jericho. Beats the shit out of Miz for a couple of times, and then he hits the code breaker on him too. And he's about to get him, and he's about to get him covered, but he gets distracted, and Ziggler runs in, hits a zigzag on Jericho, and your winner, Ziggler, building up their eventual match for the Sunday at uh, SummerSlam. You know, I do not object to that ending. I like that ending. No, no, it was good. It was just, it was uh, Dolph Ziggler being the annoying heel. And he was like, I'm going to get in your way, I'm going to drive you nuts, and I have animosity against you. And not only that, I'm Dolph Ziggler. If I see the opportunity, I'm going to win. Which is perfect for Ziggler's character. And I cannot wait for that fucking match this Sunday. Uh, same here, but the only thing I, only thing that's like, why would they put, like, does, doesn't Miz crap away? They're doing nothing with Miz right now. Fuck. Oh, who gives a shit? <laughs> This is Intercontinental Champion, though. Yeah, and look what they did to build him up as champion. I'm sorry, but Santino has a freaking match. when Santino, the U.S. Champion, has a match for SummerSlam. Hey, it it makes more sense, though. At least Santino is an over-champion, you know, that people like and has an interesting moveset. (laughs) I'm sorry, but it's just like, you you got someone... I don't care if you like Miz or not, but you got someone with the title... You got a freaking pay per view right. coming up, and they're not doing anything with that championship, just no, like with yeah, the women's, and just like with yeah, the tag. Yeah, I, I completely 100% agree with you with that statement, which is why I would have preferred. And I'm not just like trying to like put the. Yes, I'm recording a show, and you knock Wait. on the door. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wait, Miz has a match at the pay per view, and no one cares. Too. But, uh, but, Jim, I completely 100% agree with what you're saying. It's like, if you're going to give the belt to somebody, make him look like an important champion. I completely agree with that. That's why I agree more with... Uh, like, I'm not just trying to shit on The Miz, but if you would have given it to a heel that was way more over, has an interesting range of moves, like, gee, I don't know, uh, Daniel Bryan? You know, you could have had a way better champion who was way more over and hated by the fans as a heel. You know what I'm saying? But no, we got to give it to the Miz and oh, we don't have any ideas for him. So he's just going to keep losing his matches continually. So there goes the value of the belt even more, which we already had two past awesome champions. I 100% agree with that. They need. I just miss when the belts were respected. It comes and goes because the WWE Championship right now is held in importance as it should be. Tag team champions are getting built up slowly, but they know it fluctuates well, and. Sadly, the only reason the WWE Championship has started to become important again is because Cena's going after it. Mm. Well, it was important again. I mean, it, they were still putting an emphasis on it by having Punk win his matches at pay-per-views and crucial times and still being the champion, which I like because if you're a champion, you don't play fucking hot potato. You're the champion. You're better than all the people on the roster. Well, so yeah, but I, I'm not putting that on. I'm not putting that success on uh, WWE booking i'm putting that on cm punk being able to put on a damn good show but uh, i'm saying booking wise making the decision to keep him champion and also you know his work rate and put coming up in there but keeping him as champion also says that they're making the belt important because it isn't just being passed around like a cigarette in prison no it's being held well yeah the title was important but it feels like we're supposed to view other things as more important like uh, Punk is defending the title against Dolph Ziggler at the Royal Rumble, but we're supposed to care that Cena is feuding with Kane. Yeah. Because Cena has to embrace the hate to face The Rock. And he never did embrace the hate. And then he lost The Rock. Uh, anyway, well, let's just move on and get out of this tangent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forgot where we were. Holy shit! Uh, the oh. triple threat, I believe. <laughs> oh yeah, Ziggler wins. Don't worry, backlash. We're going to your next favorite thing of all—a diva tag match. Well, no, we've got a few things backstage first. 
Uh, first, we have a segment with CM Punk and Eve Torres that I don't remember. Uh, basically, Eve's just like, um, <clears throat> basically, Eve's just doing her recent thing where she's like, okay, well, I'm going to get involved and try to play the emperor, you know, manipulative bitch. And I- I'm surprised with CM Punk's wit and his character, they don't, like, have them, like, I don't know, say something that's going to hurt her feelings or make her cry. I mean, that seems like a logical thing for Punk to do. I can understand her, uh, Eve, doing the bitchy thing to, like, AJ or some other faces and them just being, like, the bigger man not wanting to do it. But Punk logically wouldn't want to say something smart or just, like, something that's going to just put her in her place. Am I right? I don't know. I Well, what they seem to be trying to build up is that she's really trying to hammer the fact in that John Cena does not respect him. And Punk is just like, well, I'll make him respect me. Man, and also hammer that point on, too. Yes, like, they're not really too worried about Punk making Eve upset. They, they just want him to be pissed at Cena. But, yeah, uh, there's a lot more shit after this that I just don't feel like talking about. Because it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, let's see. Wait, a Divas tag match doesn't go anywhere? I meant between now and the Divas segment. Let's see. Commercial. Oh. Yeah, we, we get more... We get, uh... More Poly D shit. We get more of Triple H and Shawn Michaels. We and get we another Wade Wade Bear vignette. Yeah, again, don't care. And then we get the Divas tag uh, Am I wrong for not giving a shit that Wade Barrett is coming back? No. Uh, not really. You know what they need to bring back for the WWE? The WWE Shopping Network, because that would be so much better than all these stupid promos and backstage segments. Who would they get for it? Not Don West a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I mean, that would make more sense. I mean, thing right, like, you get more money that way. This all of a sudden cuts to whoever going... You like that Dolph Ziggler shirt? Well, call this number right now with the credit card, and you can get this shirt right away. Uh, I don't know if that would work today. I mean, with the internet now, they don't think WWE is too worried about phone sales. True. Yeah, at least it'd be more entertaining. Yeah. Oh, well, but yeah, Divas Tag Match, and... I keep forgetting this. I, I had started to forget the Divas entirely. I had no idea Layla was champion. I thought Beth Phoenix was released from contract. And I and I didn't even know Caitlyn still worked here. You poor man. Your memory's just faded on you. Have any of them been on TV these past few weeks? I mean, with the exception no. of Eve. No. Uh, pretty much no. Oh, we're talking divas. Uh, not nah, has been on TV other than backstage segments and whatnot. No, I haven't even seen Layla on, in backstage segments. Like, I don't even remember her being on Raw 1000. Well, of course you wouldn't see her on Impact. She's not on that show. There, there were not on Raw. On, <laughs> what? You said Impact. I said Raw 1000. No, you said Raw 1000. Before that, you said Impact. <laughs> oh no, it's all blurring together. <laughs> oh. No, she wasn't on Raw 1000. Wait, nope. no, she was. She was. She was in that backstage thing with AJ with the hand. But that's it. Match? Nope. No, but no match. I gotta say, though, within the Divas match this night, Kaylin got better. Yeah. Not exactly, uh, she ain't a Brian Danielson, but she's got better. And I support, any yeah. di- I support any Diva or any lower wrestler, for that matter, who just improves upon their crafts and actually wants to be there. Yeah. And improve upon their actual fucking wrestling skills. Hmm. But, uh... This match happened. And Eve... And uh, Caitlin proved that she can... Uh, she could totally just hang with the bigger girls, you know? And I think that's good. Hmm. Let's see if she wins her match on SmackDown, which we'll get to. Uh, roll up. Arg. Layla and Caitlyn win. Yep. And we get more of Lesnar and Triple H after this. Don't care. But but Lesnar broke Triple H's arm. Don't care. 
the arm. Do you not care? God damn it. Are we wrestle wrestler or dark match? Let's put some enthusiasm in what we're doing. I can't. It, WWE it has failed to make was... me give a shit. It'd be easier to have more enthusiasm if exciting things were happening. I'm kind of, eh. Mm. I mean, some parts are like, yay. Like, the main event, which I kind of got freaked out because I, I was watching the main event with you guys, and I'm like, wait, we got another hour. Are they going to have this match for an entire hour? I completely <laughs> forgot about the whole, for the whole stupid, um... Oh, yeah. I actually remember thinking, man, that was a good main event match. Like, what do you mean there's 23 minutes left of the show? <laughs> I know. Like, I like we'll get into the match in a second. But just like when you do, you got the champ. It's it's so weird that CM Punk, even though they're trying to make him heal, has been telling the fucking truth. He should be the main freaking event because. Should be the main event. Should be the focus. Why the fuck does Rock have a main event shot? I find it, it's even weirder because John Cena's uh, only in the match, like in the main event match, but he's not the main event of the show. It's like, wait, what? Fuck, I remember back when, like, they had freaking, like, I'll have to go back to the not ad era, but DX, freaking DX. Someone had the title. DX was always after the t- title no matter what. Triple H had the title. Someone's always after the title. That was the main focus. And they built the rivalries around the damn title. Not broken arms, not because... Well, it does be fair. I mean, you can build a feud off of just like, oh, he broke my arm? I'm fucking pissed. That's a I know. legitimate reason to build a feud. It makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah but that's I a that's... mid-card angle. And they're treating this yeah. like this is the one thing we're supposed to be excited about. And, like, I know I went off about how, like, no matter what's happening, we're supposed to be caring about Cena. Triple H trumps all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I came to that conclusion this, that night. It's, it's, just like, it's like back in back in the. It's like back when after Stone Cold Steve Austin got hit by the car and was gone for months, and we all kind of you know, Brock has the title, all this stuff. And as soon as Austin came back, everyone stopped focusing because Austin was the main attention because he's been fucking gone. Triple H breaks his arm, and I used quotation marks around that, and he comes back, and we're all supposed to be like, "You're the main event." It's like no, Punk's main event. Punk is the main event. Triple H has had hundreds of injuries. It's you kind of expect that by now. But uh, this match. That's his gimmick. He gets injured. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. He gets injured, gone for six months with a nice paycheck. Comes back six months later, wrestles three matches, injury again. Yep. Otherwise known as the Hulk Hogan effect. Oh boy. Oh god. But Big Show versus and Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk. And John Cena. Not for most of the match. True. Yeah, this match kind of pissed me off. There was at least one, like, I'm always one for these kind of spots. The uh, taunting spot where basically Punk taunts Cena, does a few, like, does the you can't see me. And Cena's like, oh, you're going to do that? Well, fine, bitch. Watch, I'm going to do your bulldog, and then I'm going to do the clobber time thing. How about that? Which, which when you tried to do the, uh, when you tried to do the knee to the chest going into the bulldog, I mean, knee to the face to going into the bulldog, he couldn't get his knee up to his, he couldn't get the knee up to the head. <laughs> I'm sorry. For a match, I had both CM Punk and John Cena, who are the basic, the main focus of the f- feud. The thing I loved the most was the tag team of Daniel Bryan and Big Show. Because you had freaking Daniel Bryan Trying to boss the big show around. That'd be a good. Yeah, it was a very a odd tag situation. Team. That was hilarious. Like the beginning of the match, Dan Brown's like, "No, no, <laughs> no." He's, he's like talking to a dog. Like, like you try to leave the house, the dog tries to follow you. He's like, "No, back inside, back. You get out of the ring, big show. Out of the ring. I'm wrestling." It's like he could eat you. That'd actually be a pretty uh, fun heel tag team. <laughs> and the best yeah, part was just- like. It's it, yeah, it would but just be like that wonderful team Jera show, or and, no, show Miz. And, and the they, best they part was the no show. And the best part was when Daniel Bryan blind tagged himself in, and he told Big Show he's got to handle everything. Big Show just okay, just leaves him. And the Daniel Bryan's like, Big Show, don't don't leave me. And Big Show's like, bye. <laughs> uh, I'm out of here, people, peace. 
and I wish Big Show does that more often. Like, I would love Big Show just to be like, you know what? I can't get fired. I'm not going to wrestle. Like, I would do that. If I had that freaking stupid contract Big Show has that it's like, I get paid no matter what, I'd yeah. come out and as soon as I get sick of wrestling, I'm like, you know what? I'm going backstage. I'm going to get me a chalupa later. Like, have him, like, you know, walk into AJ's office and set up, like, set up a big screen TV and just sit down there and watch movies all night. It's like, you can't fire me. Ironclad contract. Ironclad contract. Now, excuse me, Skinamax. Click. <laughs> yeah, this all goes on WWE's bill. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. It's in the Ironclad contract right there. Skinamax clause. Huh. Every time <laughs> WWE has their bills for the hotels, it's like... Is that Val Venus? <laughs> 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 but the match itself was decent enough, but like, I don't know, it just had that whole meh where it's like, it's it's good, it's just filler until we get to the main of main match at SummerSlam. Yeah. This is why we always hate go home shows. Yeah. So yeah, Punk and Cena win, and this is where the show just stopped trying. Yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, yeah, oh wait, the, the actually out, uh, just main event. Uh, what about when uh, C- uh show tried to attack Cena and Punk saved him? Mm. Yeah, no one cares. Nope. So, following this. We have Damian Sandow versus Christian, and this is, for all intents and purposes, the main event. Good match. I wish it lasted longer. Oh, wow, Damian Sandow's already in the main event. How about that? <laughs> but it was just kind of weird because they're building up this feud that Sandow is having with Brodus Clay. And they and they do the thing they do, they've done a million times where Brodus Clay comes out. And Sandow is distracted, and Christian rolls him up, but he only gets two. Because I guess Damian Sandow isn't allowed to lose for some reason. I think I it's make him look too, too intellectual for losing. Yeah, I think I think it's like a point. Of, like, listen, I'm not an idiot. I know what you're doing. You're coming out to distract me so I can lose them. Well, roll up. Here it is. I knew it was coming. Hmm. Uh, actually, any one with his finisher, and I like that. They're trying to make. They're trying to make him look strong going in the pay per view because let's face it, they're going to. That's going to be the surprise match. The, the WWE thing they've been doing where there's like, oh, there's a match that was unannounced and it's Ryback. This is going to be that surprise match. Although, is anyone going to be surprised? Nope. Not, not after I'm going to be entertained. That. I'm definitely going to be entertained. Oh, well, that match should be good. I mean, we got Sandow, we got Brodus Clay, and hopefully they give it fucking length so I can see Brodus do some uh, talented shit I know he can do. So we go from the main event of Damien Shadow headlining and winning into the Damien apparent Shadow, hostage. Sandow Shadow, whatever the fuck. Um, put an H there. He's Damien Shadow. You know what? We're done talking about Raw because we're talking about we have a hostage situation. If to- I don't gi- if I didn't give a shit about the rest of the show, I give a negative shits about the contract signing. And I'm sorry, there's so much I can take of Paul Heyman. There's only so much Paul Heyman can do to make me interested in the freaking storyline. And even with him, I'm like, I don't. Mm. All right, can, well, can, dark match. Stepping over a segment and going on to the next thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, no, we, we, no, no, we got to talk about the important part. The magic show, the, uh, the uh, radio show they gave us at the end of the night. What? Huh? You know when uh, the camera lost color, uh, lost when the camera died, and all of a sudden we just hear nothing but banging and screaming for five minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. When Lesnar when Big ran Show into the, uh, when uh, Lesnar abducted Shawn Michaels. Oh yeah. Hmm. Once again, people get kidnapped on live television, and no one calls the cops. He friend they friend to break Shawn Michaels' arm. And yet they're the ones who were using lawsuits as a as their argument at one point. You know what? Maybe this is just because I don't really follow MMA, but Brock Lesnar's submission move does not look like it really hurts. 
Well, it's how he does the Kaimura lock because there's the when in the WWE East, when uh, they in the first segment happened between these two and he broke his arm. The way he's supposed to hold the Kaimura lock, like as Triple H's arm is breaking, that's how you're supposed to do the Kaimura lock. You're actually supposed to really just put it in there. Uh, when Triple, uh, wait, oh, sorry, when uh, Brock Lesnar does it, you know, in the relaxed way that he does, that's the WWE version of doing that. You know, like the arm, bre- like Alberto Del Rio's arm breaker. Huh. Okay. So it's like when he clinches it like that, that's actually how you're supposed to do it. Okay. And speaking of Alberto Del Rio. Oh, yeah, that's how he begins SmackDown. And, oh, man, Del Rio is just lost all... I've lost all enthusiasm for this guy. I mean, like, I, when he first showed up, it, it was something new and fresh and kind of interesting, but he got old quickly. He keeps playing that aristocrat gimmick, and no one cares. It, it's It's... Kind of a sad thing to say that his ring announcer is more over than him right now. Mm. Yeah, which sucks because his in-ring skills are great. It's just he's oh, not, not great. That he's interesting really of a character. Yeah, it's, it's fortunate. Although you know, you still if you keep, like, I think it's just because like people are sick of him uh, character-wise. If you're gonna keep him in like the, if you're gonna give him as much like title shots as he is, you have to have an over character and more interesting at that. If he was just being put into matches just for the sake of, like, okay, have a good match out there and not have his character over so much, no one would care. I mean, not have his character over so much. I mean, put him in the title picture. Doing a show. Oh. Oh. Oi. Anyways, <laughs> Del Rio starts to... <laughs> he still hasn't learned how to mute his mind. Cause I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Okay. Anyway, I'll, during the promo, this fucking thing I've been hate. I hate when heels do this. Is they, my lawyers are going to get involved in this. I'm like, stop with the fucking lawyers. Knock it off. <sighs> I mean, it's like we, and also we know it's going to be a SummerSlam match. It's, it's like that's a given. There's going to be a SummerSlam match. So why all the speculation? They're just trying to create drama. Like this isn't like when he broke his foot and they had to replace him last minute. uh, It's just really transparent that that they're really running low on ideas. Yeah. Forbid they might have to hire back the man who shall not be named. Uh, Can you name him just so I know who you're talking about? (laughs) The man from the 90s who we shall not speak of who made himself champion. Used to work for TNA. Gimmick guy on a pole match. <gasps> oh shit! It's Vince Russo! No! No! Dude, no. no. They're, they're running out of ideas and he's always the last resort. <sighs> yeah. That could be a completely horrifying prediction. <laughs> Oh dear I'm God! I'm just freaking out because I tend to be right with this shit. Okay, well let's go on to pleasant things. Chris Jericho comes out, <laughs> and Chris Jericho does it. Comes out, tells Alberto Del Rio to shut the hell up, and this is my favorite part of the promo where starts he starts speaking Spanish. <laughs> oh God, I love Jericho. I wish more. I wish you could. I wish. I wish that would release a thing of like Jericho teaches you Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or get Ricardo to do it. That'd just be fucking awesome. Or have him like say have Heath Slayer with him and go. Okay, now Heath Slayer, repeat after me. He speaks Spanish. Um, uh, Slayer doesn't know how to pronounce it correctly, and Jericho just like chops him. Wrong chop again. More emphasis. God damn it! Roll the R's. Locks in the locks in the line tamer. Roll the damn ah. R's. I'm not gonna let you go until you roll your R's properly. Ah. Ah. There you go. Oh, and with more enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this pre- this basically just builds up to the fact that they're gonna have a main event tonight. Which and could be good. Why two days back? No, it <laughs> definitely. I mean, you could uh, complain about his. Uh, character all you want and i'll agree with you but del rio in the ring will deliver and it's chris jericho 
the match can't possibly suck. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, uh, we come back from commercial to our first match. Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara versus The Miz and Cody Rhodes. And uh, Cody cuts a promo beforehand about how he tried to unmask Sin Cara. And what, is it with Cody uh, Rhodes? what is it with Cody Rhodes and Mexicans? <laughs> My guess is they probably did a horrible job taking care of his lawn, and that's why he hates them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. He, 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 he might he probably thinks that maybe Sin Cara is his um his uh gardener and that's why he's always chasing after him or whatever. Ow. And this go this goes with the theme of last year I where mean, the Mexicals. I do too. Super crazy is awesome. Yeah. So this match happens. But this also goes with another we were, we were talking about rehashing. Wasn't there a time when Cody wrote tried to unmask another famous Lucha Libre? Mm. Yes, there was. Los Conquistores? But if I recall, wasn't that motivated by revenge? More than... More than just, um, I hate masks? Yeah. Good point. Yeah, again, out of ideas. Mm. So, yeah, uh, Ray and Sin Cara win. Yeah, I, I, love, I love how they won, too, with the... I'm going to try to pull Sin Cara's mask off, and I'm going to lay right here on the second rope, and I'm going to try to pull his mask off. I'm even just going to relax a bit, and nothing bad can happen out of this. Nothing. I mean, happen. it's not like I'm going to match with a guy I faced a hundred times before whose main finishing move involves the second rope. Nope, I'm just going to relax on this rope and just try to pull off the mask. I'm going to even think about marshmallows and some other pleasant things. Mm, marshmallows. But Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara win, exactly. and then Miz tries to, and then Miz tries to do something and completely fails at it. Mm. And then Rey teases by picking up the title. Mm. Oh God, they gotta give Mysterio another title. <laughs> why not? It's an over. Why not? He's an over face with an interesting move set. Mm. Yeah, but and lo- and and I hope to God. I hope to God somehow it leads somehow to Brian Danielson and Rey Mysterio feuding for the belt. That'd be kind of cool. Yes, it would. And I'd cry when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> That's how happy I would be. All right. Uh, following this, uh, we get Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins doing a strip tease. New gimmick, everybody. They're the American males. You know what? I'm not bothered by this because it's actually kind of funny. And it's a whole lot of sexy. I really do hope they give him the American Males theme. It's, just... it's kind of weird. WWE, it's like they, they do stupid shit with their undercard. And it's, it's, it's kind of fun. Mm. But, they, but, they, but they're like so afraid to do stuff like that with the, uh, with the top guys. Is, is it wrong that when they start stripping, I start instantly thinking of the song Working for the Weekend? And just picturing Chris <laughs> Farley. <laughs> I no, mean, it's that's... not wrong at all. I mean, your desires are yours to follow and just live out. <laughs> <sighs> was that a gay joke? No, that was that was gay empowerment right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got go, I got go th- I gotta get a dictionary and figure out what the hell that means. Be right back. Yeah, you do that. Anyways, uh, they have a match against gay empowerment. What a, what a dummy. They, <laughs> they have a match against two no names and win. Whatever. They, they were if they if this is uh, them trying so if this is th- WWE's attempt of not only giving them new gimmick but also like building up another tag team. I support it. New tag team, individual gimmick, and uh, new tag team. Also, they worked really, really well together as a team. Yeah, I mean, a lot of when, all the, Oh, right ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. It's funny. It's funny they actually work well as a team when they're not facing Ryback. Yeah, but their opponents oh, are and, not Rhino and not Christian, as I call them. Oh, and I gotta say one thing I liked about this match where, uh, well, one thing fucking offended me actually, where it was Mike uh, Josh Matthews was talking to Cole. It's like, well, you're the in-ring expert. You talk. I'm like. 
No. Don't you ever call Michael Cole an in-ring expert at anything. Ever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you I'm forget, Michael Cole won two Slammy oh. Awards. Uh, and we'll right. never, ever, ever, ever no- hear that again from him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, he won three Slammy Awards. Shoved it up his ass. <sighs> Anyways, uh, following this, uh, we get the Raw rebound. Don't care. And uh, we have Eve, Eve Torres backstage, who's getting ready for her match, which is against Caitlin. And it's apparently uh, they, they win the right to become Booker T's assistant. Yeah. And William Regal. Awesome. Yes, William Regal is back there and wishes her luck and then reminds us that he used to be Raw GM and that power can be fleeting. And Eve says, like, I don't care. I'm going to win. And she walks away. And then we find out that William Regal is working as a janitor. Lies. <laughs> now, I just love that the really fact that... NXT. <laughs> I just love the fact they do that with William Regal. Now, whenever you need a bad joke about someone who now has the worst luck or did the worst stuff back in the day, it's always William Regal. Yeah. Because the fans, no matter what, the fans love William Regal. And it's like, yeah, they love you You now. Remember, you kissed my ass once. You used to do all this nice stuff. Now you're taking your, your technically, it's like, it's weird. Like, it's great seeing him. And I get up. And I would literally be upset if this was someone else they did this to. But it's William Regal. It's like I should be mad at this, but I'm not. Well, William Regal is a respective and amazing of the athlete he is. He's a guy who just really rolls with the punches in the WWE, and he's you know he really just goes along with the joke. He's like, eh, okay, fine. He's well, a company he has man. Fun with his role. Yeah, that's why the reason why I love uh, Regal so much is that he will actually do that. Like he's like, listen, you want me to, you want to do a joke where like you degrade what I did in the past, and then you have me saying there, no offense. Like I just love that like kiss my ass line joke. <laughs> if you have to kiss his ass, that no one looks up to you ever again. <laughs> Sorry, Will. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Going into the current angle, though, this is one thing I don't understand about like uh, the Eve versus Caitlyn angle about who's going to be the assistant. Why the fuck would Eve want to be assistant to Teddy and Booker T? Don't they both hate her? I think it's more of the fact that it's kind of, uh, for her... Well, she, she still wants, wants power. She wants some yeah, level of power. But yeah, she, she yeah, doesn't some have level. any power because... She wants it back. <laughs> I, I feel like... She, I don't know what I feel like. It, it feels like they're, they're setting her up just to look like an idiot. I think that's the. I think that's where they're going because why else would you want to work for your, for somebody that fucking the two people that obviously hate your guts? Well, I think it's for her. It's like a safety back. Me- it's like a place to fall back on. Like if someone tries to say insult her or anything, by the way, she has, at least some way of to like th- threaten them at least. Like even though they know with Teddy or Teddy and Booker that. Hey, listen. You know, I could she could say threaten Layla or whatever, and Layla knows that Teddy and Booker aren't gonna agree to that that threat. But eventually, they're gonna have sick days around the same time. There are odds are that eventually someone might get sick and someone might not be there that day, and Layla, I mean, Eve will have power. Mm. And I don't want to be mean, but back when she was assistant GM to Lauren Ice, she didn't do that bad of a job. Actually, yeah, she was a good booker. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm not hitting like, on her job skills. It was just the logic of wanting to work with someone that hates you. Because, like, it, we're let, let's face it, most of the human race is a vindictive bunch of people. So it's just like, oh, Eve, welcome to your first day of work. Now, here's what you're gonna do. Are you ready? All right, Ryback just got done using the bathroom, so we're gonna need you in there with a mop oh. and some like, really sturdy oh. industrial-sized gloves and. See, what, um, what? What I think they're, they're gonna do that for a while with her, where they have her do all those demeaning jobs, but eventually she might kind of do like a face turn or whatever at some point, some way or another. Hmm. Like I don't know. They'll probably have some like Teddy's ex and that rugby dude are making fun of Teddy, and she'll stand in and you know kind of stand up for Teddy or some shit like that. Motherfucker, Teddy don't need anybody to stand up for him. Oh shit! <laughs> Bring that oh, yeah, we, motherfucker up here. We actually forgot to mention Teddy Long is at ringside for this match. And yeah, Michael Cole know, won't would, shut up I, about it. You know, I would. You know, I'd rather just ditch the match, but 
fuck it, you know, my boy Booker just wanted me to go up there and just check over things. So I'm like, all right, Booker, I got your back. I'll do it. I don't, ha- I don't like this bitch at all. I hope the pretty white one wins. But hey, man, I got your back and I'll do my job. <laughs> Shit. Oh, and Booker T's like, oh, and you can't hurt Cole. Motherfucker, are you just... Come on, man. Can I at least read right, Michael Cole some poetry? I hear he loves poetry. <laughs> yeah, so we have Eve Torres versus Caitlyn, and we all had our fingers crossed that Caitlyn was going to win it because, God damn it, she's so cute and she improves. And Oh, I love Caitlyn. Now I do. <laughs> Before, I didn't give a shit about her, but now I'm cool with Caitlyn. Yeah, she's getting there. She's trying to avoid the whole gen- the Genetti factor as much as she can. Yeah. But yeah, Eve wins. Meh. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really upset about it. It's like, you know, good thing she won. Well, Eve's yeah, an okay Blair. heel. I'll give her that. Yeah, yeah. Blair, I'm glad she won. I needed someone to give me a foot rub. Oh yeah, I'm gonna give me a Greek. Chip as long as long as Teddy brings out that apron and the name tag for her, mm. I'll bring out more than the apron and the name tag. Shit, wait to see what I got. Wait, planned, he already did that when when they were doing the guest GM week and and he was GMing Raw and. Bitch, I'll do whatever I want. I'll do it a thousand times if I feel like it. I'm Teddy Long. <laughs> tag, yeah, Teddy would do that with the, the tag team. All right. So we get a commercial break, and Eve is backstage, and Booker is asking her if she can get along with Teddy, and she's like, oh, the past is the past. Of course I can get along with Teddy. Lies! She lies! Lying ass bitch. Oh, well. I mean, she feels smack, turns back down into a house of lies. And then we get a match out of nowhere. Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton. Oh, God, this is my second favorite match of the week. This was oh, yeah. a good match. It had un- interesting psychology. It had uh, both guys looking strong and tough. Hmm. And Danielson just working the legs. My, it, I liked how we just worked the knee the entire match and just did, like, you know, some standard wrestling stuff. Uh, my only wish is I wish, you know, they, they promoted, they always push Daniel Bryan as, like, he's the submission expert. And with the guillotine and, like, the his knowledge of just, like, holds and things like that and his LaBelle lock, that's all cool and stuff, but I just wish they let him pepper in some more moves. Like, say they let him use, like, a uh, single-leg Boston Crab or just, like, a, uh, you know, just some other, like, leg submissions and things like that to use. Like, fuck Jack Swagger. He's useless at this point. Give him the ankle lock. Give him. <laughs> True. But it was totally a good match. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until the ending. Until the... I don't. I don't. Uh, RKO it, out of nowhere. Well, well, no, because they have a distraction from Kane first. Listen, that distraction makes sense. Daniel Bryan is just checking with his anger management coach every couple of days to make sure everything is okay, and Kane is helping him control his anger. It's legit. You know what? Uh, you know what other job I'd love to see Kane do? Parole officer. Oh, uh, I thought you were gonna say um, prostol- uh, pros- uh, prostate examiner. No, that's college oh, job. He has the glove for it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. huh, now you think. Now that I think about it, that explains why he used to always just like pull that glove every time he's about to get the choke slam. He was just so used to it. Ah. Uh. You're you're in there for your doctor. As all of a sudden, the fire comes out of the sink. I am Kane. I am here to check your prostate. <laughs> oh crap! So yeah, uh, Orton wins with the RKO. Yeah. I, I'm not really going to complain because it did, because Daniel Bryan didn't look weak in this match. No, he didn't. Yeah, he looked crazy, which is what they're kind of trying to go for. Yeah. It, I hope to honest to God, since like Brian's having anger management problems and he is facing Kane, that he'll just snap and just like not only tap Kane out, but he'll just like from that point on, just like you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna hurt people. As he yep. should. I want to see a sadistic submission machine. Mm. All right. Now the next match, I do have a little bit to say, but because I learned a fact recently, 
that this has been that's been getting passed around WWE. We have Santino out at ringside uh, for the next match, which is Antonio Cesaro versus Zack Ryder. Now, here's what I found out. Apparently, that anyone who faces Zack Ryder is told to no-sell him. Damn. Wow. If that's true, that's just a dick move of epic proportions. Wow. Seriously, dick. Seriously, look. And I, I went back and looked at Pretty much any TV match he's had the past two months, nobody has sold for him. <sighs> what do they got against that? Oh, right. But what the fuck? I just... Why? Hey, guys, let's put the Intercontinental Championship, or let's put uh, this uh, someone in a title position like who's really, really good, like Zack Ryder. No, let's give it to the guy who was, it was in a movie and wasn't here for months. Or, hey, let's push this guy who sucks and th- the fans don't like at all. <laughs> it's depressing, but, yeah, Cesaro wins, of course. Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad they're trying to make a concerted effort to make uh, Cesaro look like like a uh, actual character and be a good wrestler because he is in every uh, every sense of the word. The guy can cut a promo. The guy is excellent in the ring and has a unique look. Yeah. And I loved how after at the end of the match, he just show he just got in uh, Santino's face, slapped him, and instead of Santino being a man and trying to like you know whoop ass or be a strong champion. Cesaro just fucking throws him over the announce table and bitches him out. Mm. So, in all in all hope, I hope that's going to lead to uh, him getting the United States title. Yeah, but following this, we, we just get a long segment with talking about Brock Lesnar and Triple H. And mm. it, it's really just recapping Raw again. And more talking about Twitter. Mm-hmm. And then we, we move on to our main event, Alberto Del Rio versus Chris Jericho. Good match. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Especially what happens, especially what happened earlier in the match where Chris Jericho was doing his thing. You know, the WWE superstar thing where you just walk down the backstage, you're smiling, or you're, you have your intense game face on, and the camera rolls, and the neck shows up. But... Ziggler decides to ruin that and just beats the shit out of him and just like puts a lot of emphasis on the ribs. Which Jericho goes on to sell admirably in that match. And Del Rio being the heel that he is just keeps working that ribs, just working it, working it, and Jericho just like tries to fight out of it in any way, shape, or form. A lot of insecurities in this match. Though I can't complain, insecurities are awesome. Yeah. So yeah, they're beating him up after the match, and uh, Sheamus eventually comes out to make the save. And basically, they just set up. Match is back on. Yeah, reinstated because match Sheamus is back wants on, it. bitch. Match is back on. And yeah, we all expect that. Yeah. Yep. So that was SmackDown. Again, still a very forgettable week for WWE. Not a whole lot of great build-up to SummerSlam. It, it's clear that the one thing that they really care about is Triple H and Brock Lesnar, and nobody else does. Mm. But uh, let's... Yeah, you know what? Um, I just want to say that I probably got to get a lot of hatred for this, but I really hope Alberto Del Rio wins the damn title. Well, because... well, shut up so we can get... You can talk about it when we get to it, because let's run down the card. All right. All right. Uh, up first, we have uh, the pre-show. Uh, Santino Morella versus Antonio Cesaro for the United States Championship. Well, let's see. While they're looking, while they're making looks, uh, <clears throat> while they're making Cesaro look strong, and he did have some major victories over some two higher upstars, uh, being Zack Ryder and Christian, it would... Still be kind of premature to give him the title, but at the same time, they've been making Santino look like a bitch for the past, like, well, his entire title lane, let's be honest, for after he beat Otunga. 
So um, I'm, it's highly favored. I think Tino may win it, but for the most part, I think Cesaro is going to pull this one off. I I think what's going to happen is that while Santino will win, Cesaro is probably going to have most of the offense and probably going to look strong. Like, you know, he could be a could be the next champ, but he's still got to overcome Santino a bit. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm going to go with Santino just because I, I think it's too early for Cesaro. Uh, I think was, I think I'm going to have to go with Cesaro with shenanigans involved, and that's got to lead to a thing that involves freaking Teddy and shit like that. Hmm. What kind of shenanigans? Because Oksana never really gets involved in his matches. I know, but this is the first match he has where there's a title involved, so... The stakes are higher this time. Yeah, and plus the fact, you know, if let's say she interferes, he's an out champ now. He's basically on Booker T's radar to basically just kind of screw him out of it, I guess. I don't know. That's, that's just my the- theory that they're going to... Because they're doing nothing really with the United States child. Might as well give it to a new guy. To build hype around the new guy instead of just letting it sit there. Mm. All right, moving on. R Truth and Kofi Kingston versus the primetime players for the tag team titles. And mm. I'm going to go with the primetime players. Yeah, they're really? looking prime to win the match, although they could want, they could, they. May want to just keep R Truth and Kofi looking strong, but at the same time, it's like private day players have been over, um, well, not with the crowd so much, well, but just I, I don't in their really matches. S- I don't really see uh, Truth and Kofi being anything but belt warmers because it's not like when Kofi was teamed up with Evan Bourne, they don't really seem to want to make a legitimate tag team out of these guys. Good point. I mean, they they left a the title on Kofi just to un- just until they could get R Truth back, so they could make them lose it, I guess. So yeah, I. Probably going to have to go with the primetime players. You have to go with the millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Mm. All right. Up next, we have The Miz versus Rey Mysterio for the Intercontinental title. Mm. I'm going to go with Rey. I'm going to go with Rey, but I highly doubt it. Probably going to give it to Miz. No, no, no. no. I, I think they're going with Ray because he just came back. People are really excited for him, so they probably want to get some momentum behind him. Oh, I yeah. hope that happens, believe me, but there's always that chance of just like, well, nah, fuck it. We're, we're just going to stick with the Miz. This will work out eventually. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to go with Ray. Much as I like the Miz, it may actually help to get the title off him, and he could probably start chasing the U.S. title or something. Mm, yeah, I'd probably have to say uh, Ray as well, even though I'm pretty sure Miz might win it, but I'm going with Ray for the win. Uh, I don't know. I could, yeah. All right. Following that, we have Kane versus Daniel Bryan. Hmm. Daniel Hard Bryan. Say. Probably Kane, but I hope since Daniel Bryan paid his dues for the longest period of time, he wins. I'm going to go with Kane, but by DQ. Because like Daniel Bryan's probably gonna, I'm gonna go with, start beating him with a chair at some point. I'm gonna say Daniel Bryan's gonna win, but I think AJ's gonna come out and go like, "Oh wait, no wait, something happened." Da, 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 da. Restart the match hmm. just to drive him crazier and crazier, or come out with a weird stipulation like it's an infernal match now. <laughs> she just keeps changing the stipulation. It's a uh, it's David Arquette rules, but there isn't a belt involved. Shut up. <laughs> So does that make it a ladder match? Yeah, it's a ladder match in the cage. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, up next, we have Chris Jericho versus Dolph Ziggler, and it's pretty clear they want to get Ziggler over because for all intents and purposes, he is the next world heavyweight champion. And yeah, how? It's, it's going to be Ziggler. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's pretty clear that Jericho is just putting over the younger guys at this point. So... Jericho may win though at the same time, just because of like how much shit he's gotten from Ziggler lately, and the hmm. pin, you know, getting pinned and all that. So they might just get, you know, with the money in the bank, he already is going to be the champion eventually. So they could be like, well, this is your one loss. You know, you're gonna pay your dues right now, and then you're gonna cash in the belt at this set time. Whereas Daniel Bryan had to go like that long period losing streak. Hmm. I'll go with Zigzag. All right. Up next, we have CM Punk versus John Cena versus The Big Show in a triple threat match for the WWE Championship. CM Punk. 
Yeah, they pretty much have Punk Rock both Royal Rumble. So what's the point in predicting? Yeah, I'm 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 inclined to agree with you because of uh, from what they've said that they want uh, Cena to face Punk at Night of Champions in a singles match. I am gonna say Cena's gonna win via DQ though. True. Yeah, there. Yeah, there will probably be. A DQ. Wait, how can you DQ in a triple threat? Uh, Big Show goes out and gets a steel chair. Yeah, it's it's a triple a triple threat is not an ODQ match, and if it is an ODQ match, then oh, WWE is I just. Thought, I completely forgot Cole saying that shit this week. He was like, "No DQ, a triple threat match needs no DQ." No, it fucking doesn't. Well, he did say, it just oh means my god. Wait, it, that just means there's three people in the fucking match. You god, that moron. Wait, how do you disqualify? I don't get these matches. Then it's a it's a, it works the exact same way a singles match would. Except there's three fucking people. That's it. I forgot no, about no, that. Look, Shit. Let me do this. Mega Fighter, all right? If you and me had a match, and, and it's a normal match, and I kicked you in the balls, you'd you win via disqualification. Okay, fine. All right? Now, if it's a match between you, me, and Backlash, and I kicked you in the balls, you'd win via disqualification. But how does that work? Only you'd be the one disqualified. Backlash would one- be in the match. But it doesn't matter. I, I, I use that dirty move, and you won the match from disqualification. That I, I and I just screwed backlash. That's how it works. But no. And in fact, I've pretty much proven that I I've played WB twelve, as you all know, and I've seen that in triple threat matches, You're yes, you can walk the chair. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're saying that WWE does not know how triple threat rules work, and you're defending that. By citing their own video game. Think about this for a second. Jesus Christ. Here's how it comes down to me. No! Shut up. No! You're wrong! You lose! You get nothing! Calm down, Gene. This is Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight title. Seamus. Yes, I'm going with Seamus too. Though, I, I don't know. And, uh... Let let's also discuss the odds of uh, Ziggler cashing in. There's a there's a fifty fifty. Well, I, I I think he might cash in just because there's not really anyone else for Sheamus to fight. There's no there's nobody it, really on top. It depends on uh, how how much uh, Del Rio damages put, him. Basically. Unless they want to put Orton back into the main event, which I don't think they want to do. I'm gonna have to go with I I um Seamus is probably gonna win, but I would hope Del Rio wins for the main fact is because he made that statement going, I want to wrestle in nothing but championship matches and just have Booker T come out. Okay, every match you have now is for your title. That might actually be an interesting storyline that they do. I mean like he have like Del Rio goes, No, I don't I don't want that. Yes, you did. See, clip, clip, play the clip. So tonight you are facing Oh, Sheamus for the title. And then next week, I'll be facing Big Show for the title. And then just have him title match after title match. And just have him, like, basically the 24-7 rule freaking him out. All right. And following this, we have our last match of the night. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. There's no question it's going to be Triple H. I, I think mm. Lesnar might win this one if no. they really want to sign him back. No, if they, if they, would they didn't want him back, Cena, they're, they're not going to let him beat Triple H. Actually, That's... I'm going to say, I would say it's going to be Lesnar would uh, be a DQ from HBK. No, it's going to be Triple H because <laughs> it's clear that all they're going to do with Lesnar for the entire year they've signed him for is just have him basically job to the top card. Because they are pissed about the way he's been acting. That I mean, he was supposed to beat Cena at Extreme Rules, but then he started pulling this shit with UFC, and they're like, "Okay, fuck you. We've signed you to a contract. You're gonna lose a lot." Then I'll get my lawyer Paul Heyman on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, God, you're serious. Oh, God, that's so adorable. This, this hey, guy, makes... he's got to get Paul Heyman. Uh, how many lawyers we got, guys? Oh, we got 57 lawyers. Did, did they say that if this was a street fight or not? Because Triple H's matches are usually street fights these days. 
No, but he is the COO, so my guess is gonna come up. By the way, Barack pulls out the sledgehammer. It's the street fight now. So yeah, that's gonna be SummerSlam. Yep. So shall we do? It's all HBK's fault. <laughs> the fuck all right. Is that? The new American males, Kurt Hawkins and Tyler Rex, are all HBK's fault. Um, the, the WWE Presents Radio Plays is all HBK's fault. Mega Fighter not knowing how triple threat works. Bullshit! I looked it up! You just had... You just recorded yourself being a fucking idiot. Looked Shut up, up, up! Stop it. We said WWE doesn't know how to book triple threat. You looked up how WWE books triple threats. W- I looked up how triple threats are described on Wikipedia. Okay. Are weapons allowed? One distinction from a singles match is that these matches usually omit disqualifications. Quote, Not all usually. the time, though. They function as singles, usually. Yes! Unless it's specifically stated, it is not no DQ. So you're still a moron. Shut up and learn about fucking wrestling. You're a commentator, you idiot. Wait, 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 wait. Mega Fighter. Fatal Four Ways. Are they, are they no DQ? I... How do, how do you disqualify someone from a triple threat or a Fatal Four Way? The same way you would any other match, you fucking retard. If I hit you, you know in the head of the chair, you know, if you don't know how to how to just say that someone is specifically disqualified, there's two simple words: no contest <sighs> or roll up. R- roll up. What? <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm just joking around, guys. I'm just joking. Jim, I just want to hear your reaction, backlash. Jim is now Skippy. Oh, I know this isn't going to last don't either. Don't bump him down to the card that long. Yeah. This is only that's only going to last a week, and you know it. Yeah. But anyway, who hasn't done, who hasn't played? Magpie. Oh God, my fucking headache's all HBK's fault. <laughs> oh dear. Well, that's going to do it. Time to shill. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's do our plug. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Blip TV or YouTube to keep up to date with all of our videos. You can also like us on Facebook. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Dark Match Wrestling. You can also follow us individually on Twitter, except me. Don't forget to check us out on TRA Productions, where all of our videos plus a of, <clears throat> of <clears throat> damn it, other great stuff is hosted. We're also on Reviewtopia on the community section, and last but not least, visit us on the Spoonie Experiment in the forums. And don't forget to also hit the like button on the side of the YouTube page. Tell your friends about Dark Match. Just tell us some complete strangers. And try to do something nice for just someone out there, okay? Someone get... Yeah, do something nice and get Mega Fighter a book of how to wrestle for dummies. Fuck you all. Uh, don't fucking tell me to get one of those books. Those books are just as wrong. They're not wronger than you. That's going right. to do it for Dark Match this week. I'm your fox friend, Backlash. I'm Magpie. I am Jim the Rabbit Cow, and I found this, found this weird compartment in No Leafs Jeskin. What's with all this porn? Wait, That's what? it! Yeah. Good night, everybody.